this is FX Ocelot. It is an absolutely beautiful design with the beautiful cockpit of uh, better air intakes and the than the Jaguar no not Jaguar than the Leopard. Um it's the same engine design though. Um and I've been wanting to show off this wing design, this rear wing design, because I designed it in a hybrid, and I thought that it had a kind of cool gimmick to show off, so, um, because it's kind of reused, but I modified it, kind of. And these wings just absolutely... To say they just absolutely look great. And then probably the coolest part of this model is that this is the second plane ever to be compatible with the Javelin missile right behind the Viper by Jason Merrill, which is what the Javelin was made for. So I think that's really cool. And also another thing that I wanted to accomplish with this design is kind of like an internal weapons bay look. It's not quite internal. It's more like next to the keel instead of like inside of there. But I wanted to get like a feel of like kind of like more compact rather than be, be, all the missiles being on the wings being like closer together on the inside i think that looks really cool it looks really clean like this um but while also leaving enough room for the keel so that you can throw the plane and now the last thing about this plane is that it's also made from a4 paper um you make this from an A4 paper, but I recommend cutting down a piece of square kami to A4 proportions. You'll, uh, that's what I did in the tutorial. I'll explain how to do it. So, um, yeah, I just, I just really like this design. Um, the name, uh, FX Ocelot is a variation of Jaguar and Leopard. Uh, Leopard being my design, Jaguar being uh, Jason Merrill's design, so uh, I thought that adding FX sounded cool, so FX Ocelot, and FX also sounds kind of futuristic, and this kind of looks like a futuristic design, like a future fighter, or something like that. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoy folding FX Ocelot. Okay, so what I have here is uh, some s square kami that has been cut to proportion. Um, so I'm just going to start off how I normally would start off. And that is to fold the corner over like this. And then you can do that to this side right here. Just like that. Now you can flip this over, fold this in half, and then use these pre-existing creases right here in the center and just kind of squash that, um, squash that flap over. And now we're gonna use this pre-existing crease. You're going to create this new crease right here you're just going to open this up and then flatten it down, just like that. Now, if you were using square, what you would do is you would fold this up, tear it off just like that. So now let's continue with, first of all, we gotta, let's continue by wrapping this layer around to the other side. 
like that. It's quite easy if you know what you're doing, but literally it's just reversing some creases. If you don't know what you're doing, that's, how, that's what you do. So now that you have this layer on top rather than underneath, you're going to, let's see, going to fold this, you're gonna continue, you're gonna use this crease, you're gonna make a new crease behind it, and fold this edge, fold this edge to that edge. And then you're going to just kind of fold that to the center. Do that to that to the side. Okay, so now no, what I like to do is I like to fold this piece out. I like to release this trapped paper right here and then fold it, reverse this crease, fold it on the inside just like that. Now I can do that with this side. Now that you have that, what you're going to do now is you're going to fold this flap to that edge right there. You're gonna do the same thing on the other side as well. Forgot to say that. Um, so now you can just unfold these flaps right here and these flaps right here and now what you're going to do is you're going to swivel this piece out you're going to swivel it out and make sure it lands on the nose right here and it should come to a point right there so And then you're going to use this crease. And then this should be a 90 degree angle. So you got a lot of reference references to work with so that you know that you make your crease right. I'm gonna do that to this side now. Okay, so now we can squash this while simultaneously swiveling this piece over. Flip that over, and we can do that to this side now. Okay, so now you're going to fold this into the center, just like this. Now we're mainly going to use this as a reference crease, but you want to make sure that it's pretty perfect. I'm going to do that to this side now. Because I don't know why, but this has worked pretty well most of the time because now what you're going to do is you're going to take take this small flap here and simply fold this out so that this edge right here is parallel to the bottom edge right here while uh touching that intersection right there so Like that. It, that looks pretty good. 
And you're gonna do that. Actually, you don't need to. You could just go like this. You can fold it over slightly, but it might not be exactly how you might want it. So you have to make sure that it's perfect on both sides. There. So now that we have those creases, we can fold on the center in between those creases and use these creases behind to just kind of work this petal fold out and into the center. Now, there might be a time when you won't get like a perfect petal fold like this, and that is okay. What you do is you just pull out a little bit more paper to make sure it comes to a point. This might require like trial and error to make sure you get this right. It's pretty difficult actually. But you want this to come to a point as uh, pointy as possible, so. Yeah. Then you can, come on, okay. So then you can reform this crease. Um, you might need to put a little bit of that. You might need to, like, re-crease some of that. Make sure it's creased there. Okay. And so now, what we can do next is fold our air intake down to about you want you want the crease to you want the it to intersect this edge as as a point of reference and also you want the crease to intersect the inner edge right here so now we can just Plant our crease. And then inside, reverse fold it. That looks good. And now we can fold this up. So that we can round this later into our air intake, just like that. So, now we can just do that to this side. We have another uh, reference point that we can use for the air intake, which is the other side of the paper. There we go. So, now that we have this, oh wait, no, I forgot to fold this piece up. Now that we have this, we can begin to work on the fins and stuff. The fins and rear wings, and then we can finish up the wings to make them look how they do in this one. So, first going to fold this flap up, and you'll know if you made your plane right, if when you fold this plane up, it hits that edge, but this point hits the 
crease behind, not crease, uh, the hits the edge behind it. Just like that. And so now you can fold this uh, flap behind it up as well. And then you can fold that flap to the crease that you've just made. Do that to this side now. You can unfold this piece. Um, you can unfold these two pieces, unfold these two flaps as well. And then you're gonna flip it over and you're gonna swivel this piece out right here. So, you should have this when you swivel that out. It's just like this part right here, just like just like that wing, but it's one layer behind. And so you're gonna fold this up now. Really want to make sure that your crease is right on the edge behind it. So I'm just gonna make sure it is. Just like that. And uh, I guess we could do that to this side now, just to keep things consistent. So it's a little bit tricky. You have to get this inside layer and then just kind of pop that out. Gonna make a crease on the inside because uh, people people who've done this before it should come naturally people who are experienced in folding these planes it should come naturally but I don't expect it to come naturally to all people so now that we have this fold this up now So now we just fold this flap to that edge we just folded up, and then we can swivel this piece down. That doesn't look good. Eh, it doesn't matter too much. So, now we can fold this flap down so that that edge hits that edge behind it. And then we can fold this flap to, so that this edge is on top of the edge behind it, right here. And also you want it to come to a point right there. And this point, this crease should intersect that edge behind it, this edge. So, once you have all of that, you can then unfold this pop out this layer, just kind of swivel that down, and then crease that there. This crease is already made for you. That swivel fold is already made for you, except for that little piece right there. But that's basically all you need, so. Perfect. Now we could do that to this side.
Okay, so now that you have these, you can then pop that open just like that. And then you're going to reverse this crease, this crease, and this crease. Maybe that crease, I'm not entirely sure. I'll... Gonna reverse that. The main crease that you're going to reverse is this one. So that's all you really need to pay attention to. Okay, just like that. And then you are going to fold this edge up so that it makes a crease from there to there. Then you're going to fold this up as far as it will go. And actually gonna unfold this piece right here. You're gonna refold that later. But what you're going to do now is you're going to take this flap behind and just kind of fold that over like I just did, and then inside reverse fold it. So now that you have this, I don't know why that kink keeps showing up. It's probably fine. It's fine. So now you're going to Use this crease. This step is optional, but it's cool aesthetic. You can reverse this crease right there. And fold it. It's going to swivel it. But you want it to come to that point right there. And now, swivel that piece up, and fold that open to the point behind it. And then you're going to pop out this layer. You're going to pop out the layer, fold the piece back over, and then fold that back over. So, the layers in order should go this, that, and then that. Oh, you're not, you can't see that. This, that, and then that. So. Yeah. Now what we can do is we can take this layer that we creased already. We can just fold that over. And now uh, you really, having a little pocket right there, not pocket, like a little hole right there, I guess, is actually quite ideal you might need that not need it but like you might it's useful that's what i'm trying to say so yeah you have that you could do that to the side now No, it doesn't matter.
You can also uh, leave this piece unfolded for the time being. And then just continue. Okay. And then now is the time that you would reverse fold this. One second. This is weird. I think that much is good. If you want to make sure that both sides are equal, a good way to do that is to book match it. Yeah, it looks good. It's good enough. So, just going to continue. So, now we can fold these flaps down. And then you're going to inside reverse fold these flaps right here. You're just going to inside reverse fold those pre-existing creases. And uh, you don't need it. Well, I mean, like, it's, you should. You should inside first fold that part. So, just swivel that piece back down. Simple as that. Then you're just going to swivel that piece up. The whole thing. For now, I'm just going to work on one side, and then I'll work on the other side. So, now we can fold this piece in half, but just the top layer. So, just crease the top layer. Don't crease the layer beneath it. And then we can swivel fold from that point. And then we have our wing, well, almost. We got, we still got to do some stuff afterwards, but we got the general shape of the wing now. That's what we need. And now this is just for cleanliness. I like to uh, reverse this crease. I like to just uh, wrap it around so that it's on the inside of the wing instead of creating a big pocket of drag. Because drag is sometimes not good. Because your plane does need drag in order to fly. So. But that's not good drag. So we eliminated it. Or I eliminated it. I don't know what you did. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to swivel this piece over. Just like that. 
that piece was swiveled over, in case you couldn't tell. So, now you're going to make a crease. This is a little bit tricky, but you want to make a crease going from there. Actually, no, from behind it to probably, so like from right here, that point right there, to let's say, you just want it to point halfway in between that, uh, the, the fuselage line and that crease right there. So you have that now. You can inside reverse fold that. And now we can just, we need to fold this out without having to, without the creases getting. So you're just, without the wing being like crinkled like wrinkled, I guess. But yeah, you just kind of want to swivel this out just a tiny bit, see how it works. Test the waters. Like, does this work? I don't know. I that doesn't work. So I'm gonna actually like swivel this out just a little bit more. This is, this is kind of trial and error, but you want this line to not be parallel with this, but you want it to swivel out just a tiny bit more. So, and I don't know why that edge is being weird. I'm gonna use this pencil right here. Just kind of flatten everything. Just like that. So that's our missile rack completed. And now we can continue this edge to about there and then just kind of fold that and then inside reverse fold quite simple yeah that works Okay, so now we can just do that to this side now.
Okay. So. Actually, it's better if you just land this edge on that crease, I guess. I guess that would work the best. Also, another thing that you want to make sure is that a little bit of space in between these flaps like, can go a long way. It can help out a ton. Okay, so now we can book match this and then inside reverse fold. Okay. So now you can fold this tab in half or like from that point to that point. And then you can fold it behind. Be a little bit tricky. It's a little bit tricky for me. Because sometimes thick paper doesn't want to do something that you want it to do. What in the world? Well, I 
guess the look's gonna get ruined now. How does that even happen? There we go. Now the layer is back on the outside. Not the inside layer, that white layer. There we go. Okay, so now you're going to take this layer. Um, actually, it'd be better if you just kind of made your reference. And then you started to crease, unlike what I just did. Like, don't do what the tutorial man is telling you to do. I'm just kidding. Um, so just kind of loosely crease that out. You can like refine the crease to be exactly how you want it to be when you make the jet fold. I'm gonna pull this layer out a little bit more. Oh, I keep forgetting this. I should stop forgetting this. This is really important to not forget, but I still do anyway. So you want to fold these flaps up, like all of these wings up. Because when you fold these wings up, it's a lot easier to fold them out before it's jet. It's a lot easier to fold them when it's not jet folded than being jet folded. So now we can just jet fold. Now I'm, I'm just gonna keep that in. I don't even care. I'm just gonna jet fold. It's a decently tricky fold, but you should, I highly recommend making this plane from Kami instead of like anything else. But I have made it, you might want to do a normal locking mechanism if you do anything thicker from Kami to like roll it up into fourths. But if you're using Kami like I am, you can use the leopard locking mechanism with two afterburners. And so that's what I'm going to do. Fold that in half. And then inside, reverse fold. When you inside reverse fold this, you can then Fold this in half. You'll want to make sure that you've actually like fold this in half instead of like popping the layer out. Because even though you do pop out the layer out, even though you do pop the layer out, you still need that crease. But now you can like unfold that.
do this to the other side now, just kind of crease. Bam. So now you're going to, this crease isn't really refined. You want to make sure, actually, you just want these two outermost creases to be mountain folds and fold it up like that. Then you can squash this piece right here. And now you might need to like pop out one of these layers, but you want to keep the other one in. You're going to flat <clears throat> flatten this crease out a little bit. And then tuck this onto the inside of the fuselage. Now it would actually be helpful to unfold this before working on the other side, but I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm lazy. So, yeah. Open this up slightly, and then fold in this layer. Actually, I'm going to kind of swivel that over slightly, just to keep the layers tighter together. Because the, tight, the tighter the layers are together, then uh, the better the locking mechanism will work. If I can get this piece on the inside, I will be pretty much done with the plane, so that would be appreciated if you would just slide in like that. There we go. Okay. So now I'm going to just kind of swivel this piece out just a tiny bit just to make sure that the missile rack is in place. And you might need to swivel that over because um, you might not get it perfect. It's actually even a little bit lopsided, and I hate that with a burning passion. But it's it's okay because it'll work. Um, so now what we can do is we can just round these air intakes. Try rounding them as tight as you can so that when they kind of pop out slightly, they just, they'd want to stick, like, s stick to the side.
Also, another thing that's really useful is if you take a pencil, stick it on the air intake, and then just kind of slightly unfold that crease. It helps tremendously keeping a neat, tidy look to the air intake. Now we could just do that to this side. All right. So Yeah, I guess this is our FX Ocelot. Now I will show you how to put in the javelin missile. Uh, javelin missile is uh, works best when it's created with one sixteenth the size of uh, the paper that you originally used. I'm pretty sure I have said that in the intro that I haven't recorded yet. So I will show you how to I will show you how to insert the missiles into the missile racks. You are first going to pop out your missile racks just like this. Pop out your missile racks and then take your uh, back fins of your javelin missile and then insert them straight into the missile rack like that And yeah, that is your Javelin Missile inside of your FX Ocelot, so. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, see you later. Bye.